Around two weeks ago, I uploaded a video on the 1992 Royal Rumble, the Royal Rumble that I think is the greatest of all time. I asked you guys to let me know your favourite Rumble matches so we could revisit the topic and honestly, you lot have given me a lot to work with over these next few months, so thank you for that. I looked at the pinned comment and the Rumble match that had the most upvotes was the 2001 edition and many people also commented that they'd like that particular Rumble cover so that's what we're going to look at today. I know also that this isn't a great way to pick a winner so after this video goes live I'll put a poll up and you guys can decide the next Royal Rumble video that gets covered. I know which ones are popular with viewers so if you didn't choose the 2001 Rumble then I'm pretty sure your favourite will get included in the poll. This will be a fun one for me too because I haven't watched this Rumble in quite some time so let's get to it. Alright, so the 2001 Royal Rumble was held on January 21st in the New Orleans Arena, now known as the Smoothie King Centre. Today's video is only going to look at the Royal Rumble match, but it's also important to look at the WWF title and what was going on in the main event storyline. There's not much point covering a Royal Rumble without knowing what was going on in the lead up to the big match. Our champion is Kurt Angle. Kurt had won the title back at the 2000 No Mercy pay per view and Kurt had been having quite the run with the WWF Championship. The Olympic gold medalist had defeated The Rock to win the gold, he had a successful title defence against The Undertaker at the Survivor Series, and Kurt somehow survived the Armageddon Hell in a Cell where he defended the belt against five other superstars. On the January 8th 2001 episode of Raw is War, Stone Cold Steve Austin got a shot at Kurt's title, and Austin had the match won after nailing the Stone Cold stunner. Austin pins Angle and then Triple H pulls the referee out. The game had just cost Austin the WWF Championship and Stone Cold of course wasn't very impressed. Stone Cold invites Triple H to get in the ring, the two men have a seriously intense stare down and the crowd pops huge when the two men begin slugging it out. Triple H ends up destroying Stone Cold with a metal pipe as the show comes to a close. We'd have to tune into Smackdown to see what happens next. Vince McMahon opens up Smackdown with an announcement. McMahon sarcastically says that he was shocked at what happened last week and Vince says that Triple H was verbally reprimanded for his attack on Stone Cold Steve Austin. Vince said that in the interest of safety, neither man will be appearing on Smackdown. And then Vince dropped the news that Triple H is now the number one contender while Steve Austin would have to compete in the Royal Rumble match in order to get a title shot. McMahon was doing this whole tough but fair thing during this time period but he was obviously still abusing his power. Triple H appears on the big screen, he pretends to show remorse for his actions but he instantly switches the game mode when he tells Stone Cold that this rivalry will never be over until Austin is lying at home with a broken neck. Triple H said it's only fair that he becomes the number one contender and Triple H says that Kurt Angle is the current WWF champion only because the game allowed it. At the Royal Rumble, Kurt will receive Triple H's undivided attention and Triple H will receive the WWF Championship. Later in the show, Kurt Angle realised that the odds were stacked against him at the Royal Rumble because he didn't have a McMahon in his corner. So to compensate, Angle announced that Trish Stratus would manage him at the Royal Rumble pay-per-view. Keep in mind that Trish had an ongoing storyline at the time with Stephanie McMahon. So the title match then at the Royal Rumble. Halfway through the match, Trish Stratus and Stephanie McMahon begin fighting. Vince McMahon was forced to break up the fight, he brings the women backstage, so now there should be no interference in this title match. The referee takes a bump and Stone Cold Steve Austin ends up running down to the ring. Austin gets payback by costing Triple H the match, the game gets busted open by the Texas Rattlesnake and Triple H takes a Stone Cold stunner. Kurt Angle slowly puts an arm over his opponent and the match is over. Triple H is seething and the game goes backstage to look for Stone Cold. It looked like the winner of the Royal Rumble then would face WWF Champion Kurt Angle at WrestleMania 17 if Angle could hold on to the belt until then. 
So now you know what everyone was fighting for here and you have a little more context going into the Royal Rumble. Let's look at the Rumble match itself and I know people loved the latter match between Benoit and Jericho that also took place on this very night but that's a video for another time. We get a few segments before the Rumble match. Drew Carey managed to get himself involved in the Royal Rumble match when Vince McMahon added the actor slash comedian slash game show host to the big match. The APA were happy enough to show each other their entrance numbers before Crash Holly announced that he has no problem eliminating both Bradshaw and Farouk. We then see Lowdown arguing over which member should enter the Royal Rumble rumble match but it turns out that Drew Carey got their spot. The team ended up getting a tag team title shot the next night on Raw though as compensation. Finally, right before the main event, The Rock cuts a backstage promo where he teases that the Rumble match could end with Steve Austin and himself as the final two competitors. Rock says it doesn't matter who it is though, The Rock is winning the Rumble and he's going to WrestleMania. Howard Finkel goes over the rules of the Royal Rumble before the number one entrant is revealed and it's Jeff Hardy. Jeff is going to open up the match with the right to censors Bill Buchanan. The action starts up right away with both men sharing offense. No one really gets the upper hand before the next entrant makes his way to the ring and it's Matt Hardy. We have the Hardy boys in the ring together to kick off the 2001 Royal Rumble and naturally Matt and Jeff work together to eliminate Buchanan. Matt and Jeff don't hesitate in fighting each other, they give a friendly fist bump before going at it and the Hardy boys do battle right up until number 4 comes to the ring. Matt and Jeff stop fighting as the clock reaches zero and Farouk makes his way into the Royal Rumble. Things initially look bad for Matt and Jeff but they manage to work together in order to eliminate Big Ron Simmons. And as Farouk gets eliminated, Matt tries to throw Jeff over the top rope. He isn't successful and instead, the Hardy Boys remove their shirts as the young female fans in the audience begin squealing with delight. Next out in the Royal Rumble is Drew Carey. He high fives the fans on his way to the ring as Matt Hardy hits a leg drop on brother Jeff. Drew is in absolutely no hurry to get inside the ropes. Jeff fails to connect with a drop kick but Matt sells it anyway and the two Hardy boys begin fighting in the corner as Carey gets in the ring, still wearing his glasses and still smiling away. Matt and Jeff end up eliminating each other and Drew Carey is left in the ring all alone and to be fair the audience are cheering for him. Well wipe that smile off your face because the big red machine Kane is our next entrant and Drew struggles to show any fear, it looks like he's having way too much fun. Kane gets in the ring, his pyro goes off and Mr Carey tries to buy his way out of the beating he's about to receive. Just as Drew gets lifted up for the chokeslam our next competitor enters the match, it's Raven, and Raven hits Kane across the back with a kendo stick. Drew Carey waves goodbye and he eliminates himself as Kane begins decimating Raven and the WWF milk this Drew Carey appearance for all it's worth by keeping the cameras on him while he says goodbye to the fans. Raven eventually goes to the outside to find a few weapons but Al Snow makes an appearance. He attacks Raven and then the countdown clock appears. The buzzer goes off and no one comes down. Al Snow is actually our 8th entrant here and the audience boos at how this was handled. I don't see the point in it either really. One of the best things about the rumble is seeing who runs down when the clock reaches zero but sure. Al Snow quickly turns things into a hardcore match. Raven takes a bowling ball right to the balls and the th Three men beat the hell out of each other with trash cans before the next entrant comes out, Perry Saturn. Jim Ross asks what is Terry Runnels not wearing as Jerry Lawler goes nuts for the puppies. Saturn goes right after the big red machine in a ring filled with trash cans and garbage. All three men try to take out Kane before the next entrant comes out. The two minutes in between competitors seem to be going by really fast in this rumble by the way. And then entrant number 10 comes out, it's the lethal weapon Steve Blackman, adding even more hardcore wrestlers to the mix here. 
A little bag has been conveniently left inside the ring containing Blackman's Eskrima sticks. Blackman goes to work on everyone, but Kane manages to put an end to the lethal weapon's offensive flurry. We have five guys in the ring now and it's all hardcore wrestling. Pick up a weapon and use it. Number 11 is Grandmaster Sexy. He gets a great pop at the entranceway and the Grandmaster wastes no time in picking up a trash can lid and going to work on Al Snow, Saturn and Raven. Kane goes to the outside and he picks up a trash can and the big red machine eliminates Grandmaster Sexy after whacking him hard with the weapon. Kane then eliminates Steve Blackman with the help of a trash can lid and then Al Snow, Raven and Saturn all get thrown out by the devil's favourite demon. Absolute destruction here and this Royal Rumble is remembered for Kane's performance on this night. This puts an end to the hardcore portion of the match. We then have a surprise end next it's the honky tonk man and the honky tonk man wants to sing a song while Kane stands in the ring The Honky Tonk Man asks for his theme music to get replayed and Honky begins singing Cool Cocky Bad while Kane watches. After the first verse and chorus, Kane takes the guitar and the Honky Tonk Man gets nailed before getting thrown over the top rope. The Big Red Machine is on a roll, but the 13th entrant is one of the favourites to win the whole thing. It's The Rock. After a thunderous ovation during his entrance, Rocky gets in the ring and we see some of those signature right hands. A jumping clothesline from The Rock finds its mark, but Kane manages to slow things down after bringing Rocky into the corner. Kane continues to attack Rocky as the next entrant comes down to the ring. It's The Good Father. Charles Wright doesn't last too long though. The Rock eliminates the right to censor member in around 13 seconds. And we go back to Rocky and Kane slugging it out in the middle of the ring. Rock gets in more of those right hands and Kane answers with a sidewalk slam. Already we see the countdown for our next entrant and yeah, there wasn't two minutes in between entrants here, it was only around a minute and a half before Taz comes out next. Just like the good father, Taz gets eliminated right away. Taz lasted around 10 seconds before getting eliminated by Kane. It's hard to ignore this chap right here in the audience. He's having a great time at the 2001 Royal Rumble as Kane and Rock continue to try and eliminate each other. The Rock hits a Samoan drop as number 16 enters the Royal Rumble. It's Bradshaw. Bradshaw goes right after Kane. The Rock joins forces with the Acolyte, but Bradshaw doesn't want any help. Rocky ends up taking a close line from hell. The Rock answers with a spine buster, but Kane takes out the Rock before we get to see the people's elbow. The clock counts down once again and our next entrant is Albert. Albert comes in strong but Bradshaw and Kane team up to slow him down. Kane then tries to eliminate the Rock while Albert tries to get rid of Bradshaw. Bradshaw escapes and Albert takes a big boot just before entrant number 18 gets in the ring. It's hardcore Holly. Bob Holly goes to work on Bradshaw, but Kane puts a stop to that. Bradshaw and Holly then try to double team The Rock, but the Great One hangs on for dear life. The Rock then gets an opportunity to eliminate Kane, and the crowd rises to their feet, but it's no good. Kane hangs in there as K Quick enters his very first Royal Rumble match. Albert welcomes our truth into the Royal Rumble while Bob Holly tries to eliminate Bradshaw. Kane and The Rock are still going at it and the ring is beginning to fill up with superstars. Nothing much has happened here in the last 10 minutes or so. The right to censors Val Venus comes out next and he goes right after the big red machine. Kane drills Val with a spine buster and we now have 7 competitors inside the ring. Bradshaw spears K quick while the other competitors fight amongst themselves and then the European champion William Regal makes his way into the 2001 Royal Rumble match. Regal goes after K quick first before moving on to Bradshaw. The Rock then hits the spine buster on Val Venus but he can't follow up. Venus tries to eliminate Rocky and Bradshaw ends up coming over for the save. This makes no sense at all and I always hate it when this happens in Rumble matches. The clock appears once again. Number 22 in the Royal Rumble is Test, the former partner of Albert. Test gets in and he dumps Regal over the top rope. The audience could be heard booing when Regal got eliminated. The Rock has been a big target of all the other superstars in this match. Guys have been trying to eliminate the people's champ but somehow The Rock has stayed in there. 
Number 23 is a returning superstar, it's The Big Show, and Show also gets a great ovation as he comes to the ring. The Big Show had been taken off TV the previous summer in order to drop weight and improve his cardio, and Show must have felt great when he got this warm welcome from the fans in New Orleans. The Big Show doesn't win Rumble matches, but he's always a game changer, and Show wastes no time in eliminating superstars in this Rumble match. Test goes out first, followed by Kay Quick, Albert Bradshaw, Venus, Holly, and Kane take choke slams, and then the big man goes for the rock. The rock gets out of the choke slam with a low blow. Rocky lands a few right hands, followed by the spit punch, and the big show gets eliminated after a big clothesline from the great one. Crash Holly then hits the ring, but that doesn't seem as important as what's happening on the outside. The Big Show is pissed off, and The Rock takes a choke slam through the announce table before Show goes back to the locker room. The Rock is out cold, but the match continues. The competitors inside the ring have all teamed up to work over Kane. The superstars try to dump the big red machine over the top rope as the clock begins counting down our next entrant. Limp Bizkit's rolling plays in the arena, it's The Undertaker. Fans were unsure if the Brothers of Destruction would reunite at the Rumble, and the American badass actually helps his brother out right away when he begins cleaning house. The Undertaker and Kane then proceed to eliminate every single person inside the ring, and now fans wonder if the brothers will go after each other. Taker and Kane come nose to nose, but they're interrupted by the next entrant. A clearly worried and a clearly scared Scotty Too Hotty enters the Royal Rumble, and it's almost like Scotty is walking to his death. The Brothers of Destruction wait for Scotty to get in the ring, and the Brothers of Destruction completely wreck poor Scotty. After taking a double choke slam, Scotty gets dumped out of the ring. Taker and Kane then refuse to fight each other, they instead wait for the next entrant. The glass shatters and Stone Cold Steve Austin enters the Royal Rumble at number 27. I'll be honest, things felt a little uneventful, but since the big show came into the match, things have really picked up with Taker and Austin's arrivals also. The 2001 Royal Rumble is now getting interesting. Stone Cold Steve Austin has to face the Brothers of Destruction while The Rock is still let out on the outside, and as Austin approaches the ring, the game Triple H runs down and he attacks Stone Cold. The two men share punches on the entranceway as The Rock gets back in the ring. The Brothers of Destruction go after the Great One as Triple H continues to destroy Austin. Stone Cold has been busted open and it looks like Stone Cold won't be making it back to the ring. The next competitor comes into the match, the one Billy Gunn sprints to the ring and he goes right after Kane and The Undertaker. He actually does quite well for a moment but his good fortune doesn't last long. Officials have pulled Triple H away from Austin and Austin is a bloody mess, he's been completely decimated by the game. The Undertaker hits a massive DDT on the rock as the big red machine takes care of Billy Gunn in the corner. Number 29 is yet another surprise entrant, it's Haku. The audience doesn't know how to react at first, but they quickly begin booing as Haku goes right after the American badass. Haku then goes for Kane, he shows no fear at all by going after both Brothers of Destruction at the same time, but the fans don't care, they're chanting for Austin, who isn't moving at all from the entrance way. Our last entrant in the 2001 Royal Rumble is Rikishi. Stone Cold has now tried to make his way to the ring, but Rikishi sees Austin and he goes for the attack. Stone Cold fights back and the rattlesnake finally gets in the ring. Austin hits anything that moves. Haku gets eliminated and we're down to six men. Rikishi takes a choke slam from The Undertaker before the dead man goes toe to toe with The Rock. Rikishi then goes back to The Undertaker and the dead man gets eliminated after a sidekick. The audience were a little shocked with this elimination. Rikishi then drags Rocky to the corner, but The Rock wakes up. Rocky is able to dump Rikishi over the top rope, and so we have our final four. Billy Gunn, The Rock, Steve Austin, and Kane. Billy Gunn hits the Famouser on Stone Cold, but it doesn't do enough damage. Gunn tries to eliminate Austin, but Gunn gets thrown out instead. 
The Rock hits a DDT on Kane before all three men take a break. A great moment then happens when Austin and Rock lock eyes from across the ring. The two men step up and it's right hand after right hand as the Rattlesnake and the Brahma Bull go at it in the Royal Rumble. The Rock goes for the Rock bottom but Austin reverses with a stone cold stunner. Kane then wakes up but the Luthez press puts the big red machine right back down to the mat. Austin then finds himself getting nailed with a rock bottom. Rock and Kane then go at it and Kane gets thrown over the middle rope, not the top rope. Rock and Austin then struggle to eliminate each other. Kane wakes up and he tries to eliminate both men, but only the Rock's feet hit the floor. The Rock has just been eliminated from the 2001 Raw Rumble. It's down to Austin and the Big Red Machine, and remember Kane has been dominant in this Raw Rumble. Austin lays in a series of punches, but Kane replies with a choke slam. Kane then signals that the end is here, but Stone Cold hits a low blow that buys him a little time. Kane then goes to the outside and he grabs a steel chair, but Stone Cold kicks his opponent. Kane goes for the tombstone, but Austin reverses and he hits the Stone Cold Stunner. Austin then grabs the steel chair. He smashes Kane's face in, not once, not twice, but three times. And Stone Cold wins the Royal Rumble by clotheslining Kane over the top rope. The pop is absolutely tremendous. The 2001 Royal Rumble comes to an end and Steve Austin is going to WrestleMania 17 to face the WWF Champion, whoever that may be. Stone Cold celebrates with a few beers in the ring as the show comes to an end. So I'm not going to spend a bunch of time here comparing the 1992 Rumble with the 2001 Rumble because everyone has their own personal opinion and you'll either agree or you won't agree. The 2001 Royal Rumble was a lot of fun to watch but I personally think, and please remember that this is only my opinion, but I think it's a little uneventful after the hardcore portion of the match right up until the big show makes his entrance. Don't get me wrong though, the last 20 minutes or so is loads of fun, it's very exciting stuff, but it feels like we have to wait a little before the match truly heats up. Even so, this one does rank up there as one of the best, and I can see why people have a soft spot for the 2001 Rumble match. It's the last one of the Attitude Era, and it features a lot of guys who made that era so memorable. It features the timeless tale of Steve Austin overcoming the odds because he's a tough SOB, winning the Rumble for a record third time. It's got a Brothers of Destruction reunion, there's 11 eliminations from Kane, there's a lot to enjoy here even if things get a little slow mid-match. I'm also not going to spend much time talking about Steve Austin going to WrestleMania 17. I get a ton of people asking me to cover that particular event from start to end and yeah, it's going to happen very soon so look out for that one. But is the 2001 Rumble my favourite Rumble match? No, I still prefer the 1992 Royal Rumble. But as a complete event from start to end with the inclusion of the latter match, the 2001 Royal Rumble pay-per-view is maybe a better show overall. But again, it's all opinions. You don't need to choose one. You can just watch both and have a great time. Opinions on the greatest Royal Rumble are truly all over the place and this is a good thing. It means there's plenty of excellent matches to read visit and it lets fans talk about why they enjoyed their particular favourite. Hopefully we get a good 2021 edition of the Royal Rumble though, we may not have the same star power these days, but the Rumble match is always a fun time and it's always interesting to see who's getting the title shots at Wrestlemania. Thank you very much for watching and take care.